Welcome back. Today, I'm going to begin reading for you a story that I entitled, Just a Simple Carpenter. It starts out with a portion of this Christmas story, but then goes a little bit beyond that. And so, without further ado, Just a Simple Carpenter, the story of Joseph. Chapter 1. It was one of the most wonderful days of my life. My father had informed me that the deal was made. I would indeed marry the beautiful young Mary. I was sure the match would be perfect. Her family was well thought of in the community. She had a quietness about her that told of self-control, not known to many of the younger women of marrying age. But like most young men who had begun the search for just the right wife, I had focused mainly on the beautiful eyes that seemed to pick up the smile that graced her face with radiance. Each year as I grew older, I thanked God and my father for having the foresight to arrange a marriage with Mary's father when I was but five years old. And this day was the day that all the plans and promises would be fulfilled. This was the marriage ceremony. We were to be officially betrothed, espoused, and looking forward to the day only ten short months away when we would conduct the wedding feast. As I looked at my young bride, I knew that there would never be another for me. And from the look in her eyes, which she was quick to avert from mine, as was the custom, I could tell that she was also pleased with the arrangement. I had worked hard in the shop, taken extra jobs, worked long hours to complete projects early with the possibility of a bonus in mind to complete the dowry. For, all, for an artisan like myself, Hezekiah was awfully proud of his daughters, especially Mary. After all, she was his third daughter. I believe my offer of two goats and the barter of a new feasting table from my shop was very generous to present for the hand of the young woman. She would no longer be his burden. According to the law, our laws, she would become my responsibility at the moment that the betrothal ceremony was completed. Then we could take anywhere from six months to a year to plan the wedding feast. The table I offered alone, once finished, would be worth three days wages to the potter that Hezekiah was. I feigned outrage when he had countered with a demand for a donkey, seven goats, five bolts of silk, and the feasting table. Gladly, I would have presented that and much more for the privilege of marrying his daughter. Although she was the third daughter, all the beauty of Israel rested in those expressive eyes, now stealing another glance in my direction. No woman in Hezekiah's family, nor anywhere in Nazareth, drew even the slightest comparison to my Mary. I should not say my Mary, for she did not belong to me then or now. Perhaps I belong to her. Yes, even now my heart cannot be wrested from her tender grasp. So, after bargaining the like of which you may not even see in the marketplace, Hezekiah and I agreed upon the price of two goats, three lambs, one spotless cloak of virgin wool, and the feasting table. Once more, the arrangements of the ornamentation of the table was com once. Once the ornamentation of the table was completed, I would be able to claim my bride. The betrothal ceremony made my heart sore. Our fathers brought us together in the presence of all our family and friends. It seemed that all of Nazareth had turned out for the, for the occasion. I was building a fair business, making furniture and cabinets for many of the people in town, and Mary 
was the most loved of all her father's daughters. She was quiet and beautiful with eyes that smiled even in sadness and a smile that radiated from within. It seems, as I look back, that I should have been able to tell that she had a special touch of God even before we were espoused. In the simple ceremony that was so well attended, we exchanged promises of commitment and fidelity. It was too early to pledge love, although we both felt that our hearts were reaching for one another. I placed on her finger the simple ring of promise. I had saved my extra pennies for two years to have the coins to purchase a most, the, a most elegant, awe-inspiring ring. Many of my cousins ridiculed me for spending a month's wages on a wife that might turn out to be a source of bitterness for me. But I would have none of it. I would begin the relationship with the best, for I would not have a wife who went to the well complaining about the abuses of her husband. Everything pointed to the perfect life together. This was why I couldn't believe the report my friend Hoshea brought me to me from his wife only three months after the betrothal ceremony. We'll have some more of this later. Thanks for watching.